All right. Welcome everyone to virtual coffee break with Tanisha. How's everybody doing today? Everybody doing great? Great. Awesome. Amazing. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we have a great, I have a great topic that we're going to discuss today, but before we get started in that, is there anything that we can celebrate? Anybody do anything in their business that we can celebrate today? We definitely want to recognize the people that are actively doing those income producing activities um, and growing their business, reaching out to more people. Anybody do anything we can celebrate? Well, um, I'll go first. I went to a, um, a wedding expo this weekend and I actually, the event planner gave me the opportunity to come be a vendor there for free. Wow. Um, so we we contacted each other on Facebook. I'm actually going to send her an email. So I'm excited about being able to finally do that. That's <laughs> doing it for awesome. Free. <laughs> yeah, that's really, really good. Congratulations. And Shawana, she signed her first business partner. Yay! Shawana, talk about it. We want to hear. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Um, Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, well, it was a long time coming, I felt like. I've been in the business since February. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, my ideal was I should have had like 100 people already signed up. But um, it, it, was, it, was, it made me want to do more. Like, I'm excited for the person that I did sign up. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm glad that it's quality. Mm -hmm. I feel like I have a quality DP. So um, I'm ready to do more now. I'm ready to really look at the people that are interested and want to come along with me. So. And how did you come across this person? Uh, social media marketing. So I, I don't even, I've never met her before. Um, we met in a group. I'm not even sure which group we met in, but I piqued interest and uh, talked to her a little bit in her inbox and sent her the information for a webinar along um, and so she got on and did my three-way call and that's all she wrote. Excellent. You followed the PS3 and it worked out just fine. See, I love it. I love it. That's that's amazing. Congratulations. Uh and is it Tajane? I don't want to pronounce your name wrong. Yes, it's Tajane. I, I did good. I did that. Thank you. So Tajane, you booked your first, let's see, 18 person group cruise. Tell us about that. That is fantastic. Uh, yeah, so I've been actually, sorry. <laughs> it's loud or not, but um, I've been working with this group for a minute and it's for a bachelor party. Uh, so they actually received all the deposits and the first initial one for the cabins and I was up all night yesterday and finished and so their book excellent and which cruise line did you use carnival carnival and how did you find this um this client um it was actually a family friend and so him and his wife are getting married he wanted to do his bachelor's party at a on a cruise so they will be leaving there in November and then him and his wife will be actually booking through me for their anniversary. Excellent. Or no, the honeymoon. The honeymoon. For the honeymoon. Yep. And I'm sure in the future it'll be the anniversaries too. Yeah. <laughs> that is awesome. Congratulations. Good job. Good job. And Rachel, go ahead, Rachel. Tell us about uh, what you can celebrate. I, I, I don't have no celebration. I, I almost did. You know, I had somebody who was in a kind of gig type of opportunity in the past who I know of. So I invited him to a presentation. He said he was going to take a look. I, you know, kind of went to got to know him a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I had set up a three way with uh, Director Rose. Yes. But I, after the presentation, I could not find him. So I had text Director Rose prior to let him know that I haven't found the person. Okay. So it was nothing. All right, but okay. Well, guess what? You're still doing the PS3. You're still exposing people, and that's the name of the game, right? 
Expose and close. Miss Beverly? Hey. Hey, this is Beverly. I wanted to just come out and give a shout out. Um, on the travel side, I am booking a Disney cruise, which I think is extremely exciting. So I got that booking for a family, um, uh, 12 people. And then also I have a um, high school reunion, 35 plus. So we're up to 35 now and they're going to be traveling to Montego Bay. So, Ooh, you baby. know, just working there, working all sides of the business. So I just wanted to give a shout out and share. Thank awesome. You. Congratulations, Beverly. Ooh, thank, that commission on that Disney cruise is going to be mwah, sweet. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Miss Pandora. You're on mute. You having a whole conversation by yourself. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sorry about that. But I just, I'm so excited still on high from this past Saturday. We had our first travel um, party in Mississippi, y'all. And guess who was our special guest? That I mean, it was electric in the room. Dr. Director Burke, she came and just tore it up. The people were so excited. They asked question after question. She answered and it was awesome. And I have two, two mighty, uh, you know, I might be getting two partners today. So it's a blessing. It was a great, great thing. And thank you. <laughs> Excellent. And congratulations on inviting. That was awesome. It was a great crowd. They were very engaging. And we just love it as leaders when we're able to close and there's a good group of people and they're engaging. So congratulations to you. Anyone else do anything we can celebrate? Rachel said, I'm brand new. My fiance just started, but we got our list together of people to reach out to. That's good. Work on that list. Keep building that list, both of you, right? Because you know people that your fiance doesn't know. Your fiance knows people that you don't know. And so together, you're able to really build a nice list. And each of you should have your own separate list as well. All right. Benita? Good evening. Um, I have, um, I did a um, PS3. I think that's what you say. A three-way call? The three-way call. And my daughter um, is going to be, um, she's going to join. Then I have another friend that um, she keep on catching half and half because of the grandkids mm -hmm. but she already been doing something like this so she's very interested she just moved now to north carolina but she's thinking about well she want to be one too she's not thinking she want to be one but she's still kind of not understanding so much and she speaks spanish um she's from panama so she says she's more hands-on mm -hmm. so i'm gonna talk to my um sponsor about that um because she's been doing it for her family for years mm -hmm. so she want to get in there like you know i'm getting hype i'm hyping everybody up <laughs> even though i'm the slow one but i'm hyping everybody else up because i don't want to hold nobody i don't want to hold the blessing of other people of the family and right. then i have another i have a grand i mean a nephew that think it's a pyramid but she told me don't worry about him just make an appointment with me and we're gonna get that pyramid mind out of him so Right. Uh, hopefully, I might have three coming up. That's good. That's good. And be a, what is the bronze builder? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Just get these people on a three way call so that mm -hmm. your business partner can close them and overcome the objections. Um, shout out to Destiny. She booked four cabins on a carnival cruise for October. That is awesome. Congratulations, uh, Debbie. Um, yeah, so I received a text last night from a, a travel nurse that I've been booking travel for for probably the last three years, and she told me she's ready to sign, so she's going to be signing up. Um, she gave me a date of July 7th, so. Excellent. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> Man, so what, what have we learned, y'all? Patience. It's not about you being ready. It's about when your prospect is ready. So just keep doing what you're doing. As we always say, you might forget the work, but the work won't forget you, right? It's taken three years for Debbie's client to now turn into um, a business partner. 
right? So you got to be patient. Now, imagine if Debbie only focused on that one person trying to convert them, right? That would have slowed everything up. But now she keeps focusing on who's next, who's next, who's next, right? And if you always keep that mindset, um, you'll be good. Uh, Winona said, can't come off of mute, but I was a vendor at an event for the first time two weeks ago, and we'll be doing it again this Saturday during the Rochester Jazz Fest. That is awesome. Great way to meet people, collect their names and their, their emails and their phone numbers so that you can have a list of people. You add all of those people to your list and then you prospect them. And also make sure when you're doing these vendor events, it's a good idea to find these people on Facebook. So like, you know, have your phone there, have your Facebook up, say, hey, are you on social media? Would love to stay connected with you on social media and have them find themselves um, and send you a friend request right then and there. Because once they start, once you have them on social media, you got them because then they're gonna start to see everything that you're doing um, and then you'll be able to peek them. Michelle? Good afternoon, Director Burke. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. I, I have a win on the travel side. I'm currently working on a 20 cabin cruise on Royal Caribbean. Ooh. It's a family cruise. So um, everybody's booked. So we're in this for February. So that is awesome. Awesome. Oh, that's going to be a nice commission, too. On Royal, that's one of my favorite crew li cruise lines. Um, shout out to Amber Thompson. She says she's booking six uh, to the Caribbean. Congratulations, Amber. And you are on my mind to reach out to. So congratulations to Amber working on a booking of six to the Caribbean. That's awesome. I love seeing everyone working both sides of their business. Um, yes, we love the planet marketing side with the seven streams of income and being able to leave a legacy and all of those things. But our travel product is amazing. And it is the travel season, right? People are booking and going places and stuff. So make sure that you are leveraging both sides um, of the business. So that's really good. All right, so let's jump into today's topic. Um, I came up with this topic because I hear so many people who say that or consider themselves an introvert. So we wanna we wanna help you with that because when I, when I hear you say that, when I hear people say, "Oh, I'm an introvert," I immediately hear an excuse for why you're not gonna do well in the business. It's like you are automatically setting yourself up for failure. You're giving yourself an out, and there is power in the tongue. And when you call yourself an introvert, that is very negative. There's nothing positive about it. And so we must, just like how I'm always smacking your hand when you say the try word, right? The T word, we don't say I'm trying, right? I'm gonna start smacking hands when you keep calling yourself an introvert. So today's topic is going to be how to stop being an introvert. And type in the chat, who can, and also on Facebook, who considers themselves to be an introvert, honestly? Anybody? I'm checking Facebook. Amber said she's she considers herself an introvert. Okay, Debbie, Rochelle, Bonita, Martina, Destiny. Really? All of y'all? Winona, Terrence, really? Shauna, you too? Pandora? <laughs> Tajanae said I'm both. <laughs> Zara. All right, so let's get into this. And here's one thing I want to point out about that. Do you tell your boss that you can't do the job that you do because you're an introvert? Just asking for a friend. It's so crazy, right? So why is it from nine to five or whatever you do on your day job, you don't let being a introvert stop you from doing your job 
but then you come over to your business, but you let int- being an introvert stop you from working your business. Does that make any sense? Of course not, right? So we need to do better. It's really just an excuse. It's just an excuse. So let's talk about the definition of an introvert. An introvert is someone who gets their energy from being alone. That's it. So by definition, it does not mean introverts are shy, not well liked, or not able to hold a conversation. That puts some a different perspective on being an introvert, right? So for those of you who said, yes, I'm an introvert, now that you know that the definition, and I'm gonna read it again, an introvert is someone who gets their energy from being alone, do you still think that you are an introvert? Does being alone give you energy? Anybody, Shauna, you say you do get your energy from being alone? Come off mute. I want to talk about that. I want to hear from you. Um, maybe it's because I am in customer service for my job. Mm-hmm. And um, it's a mask. I have to put on my clothes to Mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. So when I don't have to do that, when I'm able to take that off, I feel better. I feel more myself. I feel more energized, literally. So um, being around people in the physical, I kind of have to prepare myself. Okay. So um, when I say I'm an introvert, it's definitely in person when it's something that has nothing to do with me code switching or my mask, if that makes any sense. Yes, I get that. Okay, all right. Let's but on social that. media, I'm not. <laughs> right. Social media, I'm, a, I'm an extrovert. Okay. Let's go to the other side of that. Debbie, Debbie said, wow. No, I don't. Debbie, can you talk about it? Yeah, I don't know what to say, though. I really, that definition just really hit me because I never did realize that that was the meaning of introvert. And I don't feel like I get energy from being by myself. I mean, occasionally I might when I need just to chill, but for the most part, I enjoy being around people and I get energy when I'm around people. So so you're not an introvert. Right. So that surprises me. That's good. I'm glad to hear that, though. Exactly, right? So now you can stop putting uh, that negative, you know, that negative label on yourself. Right, right. Exactly. Benita? Well, I don't know what to call me because, um, like, in church now, I ask them to let me, you know, speak more, like, to read the Bible. um, Because in the beginning, when they used to call me, my heart used to race so bad that sometimes they want to, call 911 because it's like when I see people like you know looking at the congregation I'm crying I'm I I, I freeze Mm -hmm. but like one-on-one I'm good but just uh in a group but it depends what that group is so it's like one-on-one I can talk but like in front of people I'm not my heart just it's like even before I can get to the poop pit, it's going to go boogle, 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 So right. I don't know what to call me. <laughs> so, Benita, what you need to do is look up and find a local Toastmasters organization. They're all over the country. Find the Toastmasters. And what they do is they help people uh, learn to be comfortable with public speaking, right? So take your uh, your challenge and turn it into a strength right? And you want to work on it. Let's look at an extrovert. So I'm gonna go back. The definition of an introvert is someone who gets their energy from being alone. But an extrovert is someone who gets their energy from spending time with people, which usually means you won't find a shy extrovert. But you can also find an extrovert with not as great social skills. So with some of you who may be calling yourself an introvert, it might be more of, it's not that you're an introvert, 
but you just need help developing your social skills, which we can fix that, right? That doesn't sound so negative, right? That just sounds like something like, oh, okay, yeah. So I'm gonna repeat it again. First of all, introvert. The definition of an introvert is someone who gets their energy from being alone. But an extrovert is someone who gets their energy from spending time with people, which usually means you won't find a shy extrovert, but you can also find an extrovert with not as great social skills. So how many of you, honestly, who raised your hand and said that you were an introvert now you kind of want to change it and say yeah i probably just need help with increasing my social skills sharpening my social skills bonita okay good good rochelle good koya yes that's what i'm talking about that's what martina okay so let's talk about these social skills uh let's talk about them all right so People who want to stop being an introvert are usually looking to stop being shy, to stop avoid gatherings or parties or to have more friends. Those are all things that can achieve that you can achieve without actually changing the fact that you're an introvert. So I'm going to give you some steps and these steps will definitely help you become more accustomed to spending time with people gathering in large crowds or starting up conversations which probably means you'll build up a kind of tolerance over time and not feel like as much of an introvert as you used to be all right so let's get into this i'm going to give you seven number one practice starting up conversations with people familiar and random Practice starting up conversations with people familiar and random. One of the most common stereotypes about introverts is that they aren't usually the ones to start up a conversation. They're the listeners and the ones that need to be asked questions in order to feel like they have anything to say. You have to ditch that and force yourself to start having conversations with people and being the one to initiate those conversations practice complimenting people on things to start conversations practice going up to them and saying hello and introducing yourself the only way it will ever get any easier is with practice and if you think hard enough you really can think of something to say to just about everyone and if it's talking about something mon mundane like the weather at first, even if it is talking about something mundane like the weather, right? So what are your thoughts on that? Pushing yourself to start a conversation. Anybody ready to take on that challenge? Rochelle, all right, that's good, that's good. All right, number two. Force yourself to go to events with large groups of people and find your zen there find your happy place there so again force yourself to go to events with large groups of people and find your zen there another thing that often tires introverts out is going to events with large groups of people if being around people drains you then it makes sense that the more people you're around the faster you get drained to stop being an introvert you're going to have to expose yourself to these kinds of large events and larger groups of people regularly, including spending time in friend groups or large dinners or really anything that involves more than just one to one conversation. If this is hard at first, try being mindful and finding your Zen at these types of places, faking it until you make it really. Tell yourself you're having a great time. Look around the room and point out five awesome hairstyles uh, to yourself. Fixate on a section of the wall for a moment before you get too stressed out. Just use exposure therapy to keep yourself in that environment and doing your best to go along with it and find the fun in it rather than thinking that you don't like it. That is good. 
So basically, exposure therapy is the very thing that you don't like or you're afraid of. You just expose yourself to it even more. So then you're not like there's some people who are um, afraid of heights. Right? How do you get over being afraid of heights? You put yourself in a position where you're up high. And if you do that repeatedly, you're no longer afraid of heights. But if you stay on the ground, you will always be afraid of heights. It's not like you're just going to wake up one day and say, all right, I'm over that fear. No, you have to conquer your fear. We always say, and write this down, y'all, feel the fear and do it anyway. That's our motto here at Planet Marketing. Feel the fear and do it anyway. You're not gonna die. You're not gonna die. But you have to overexpose yourself to these things that you're uncomfortable with, right? You have to turn your weakness into your strength. And it takes work to do that. And some people are just not willing to do the work. But you have to step out of your comfort zone in order to get into your money zone. This is a relationship building business. So how do you expect to make money if you're afraid to have relationships with people or to start new relationships with people? That is a very unrealistic expectation. Oh yeah, I wanna make a lot of money, but I don't like people. I don't like being around people. I don't like talking to people. What, what? Do y'all know relationships are the new currency and your net worth is your net worth? So feel the fear and do it anyway. Number three, instead of spending time alone, call a friend. Introverts can often be thought of as people who spend a lot of time by themselves, but you can still be an introvert who has your dedicated alone time while spending most of your time talking to friends or family. If you've been spending a lot of time alone lately, force yourself to either go see a friend in person or pick up the phone and call a friend you haven't talked to in a while. It's up to you. That's simple. Everybody can do that. We all have people that we haven't spoken to in a while, and now you have a reason to call them. And guess what? These are people you're gonna end up peaking. Think about your, your list of your warm market people you went to high school with, haven't spoken to them in 20 years. So now you pick up the phone, you call them, you reach out or you hit them up on Facebook to you know, get their updated number and say, I just wanna connect with you, see what you've been doing, right? Number four, think your thoughts out loud. Think your thoughts out loud. Part of the introvert and extrovert divide also has to do with how we process thoughts. Extroverts usually process them out loud, while introverts process them internally before speaking them. So if you want to learn to be more extroverted, you'll want to start trying to talk your thoughts out loud as you think them not always spend tons of time mulling them over before you bring them up to someone. Think of thoughts like a photo coming up, coming up a screen. If a photo of a waterfall comes up one time for an extrovert, they're likely to say to those around them, hey, aren't waterfalls cool? I'm thinking about waterfalls. Though maybe later, when you're like, oh yeah, let's talk about waterfalls, they may no longer care about them anymore. For an introvert, they'll wait until the photo of a waterfall appears at least a few times before they really start to process it. And then they're not going to talk to a friend about waterfalls until they themselves understand why they were thinking about waterfalls or what they want to say about waterfalls. Introverts can sometimes get annoyed that extroverts seem to say whatever is in their head with no filter or internal reflection. But if you want to learn how to stop being an introvert, then you too will want to start thinking out loud a lot more often. <laughs> Martina, what made you laugh about that?
Martina? Um, yes, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> what made you laugh about that? Uh, when you said that introverts about the waterfalls, they are thinking about waterfalls, but then the extroverts, you know, moved on from that situation. Meanwhile, the introverts are still thinking about it. <laughs> Do you see yourself like that? Does that happen sometimes? No, I'm not sure. I, I find myself in between an introvert and an extrovert, but I do love my alone time, but I don't have a problem being around crowds. Okay. All right. So it's probably just, again, sharpening your social skills. Mm -hmm. What I found interesting is that extroverts seem to just say whatever is in their head with no filter or internal reflection. That's me sometimes. I'm sometimes that person that doesn't have the filter. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> so then there does need to be a balance with that. Number five. All right. This one's going to freak some people out. Say yes to all invitations. <laughs> Shawana's already shaking her head. Yes. Say yes to all invitations. Ever seen those memes about introverts excuses to say no to going to an event or ex accepting an invite? They say an introvert loves canceled plans. So if you don't want to be an introvert, you'll want to get out of your comfort zone and say yes to every single invitation you receive to do something. As an introvert myself, this sounds like a nightmare, but if you're really trying to change and to be more extroverted, the more invitations you say yes to, you'll get more used to social interaction and not feeling like you have to have two months notice for a social event. Lawanda, come on Lawanda Allen, come off of mute. She said, I don't know about that. Let's talk about it. Uh, I'm definitely an introvert. I don't like big crowds. They freak me out. I can't tell what everybody's thinking. I, I got to know what they're thinking. I, I don't know. Mm -mm. Well, I mean, if you're in a crowd and you want to know what someone's thinking, then that's a great way to start a conversation. That's how I look at it, right? It's, it's hey, how you doing? That's a beautiful dress. You know, are you enjoying the event? And guess what? I, mean, I, I, tell you I, what I do that, but I feel awkward because I don't know what else to say after that. Right. So you're not an introvert. You just need help with your social skills, which is why I gave the definition in the beginning of the difference between an introvert and an extrovert. And I'm going to go back to that for those of you that may have joined late. An introvert. Ah. Hold mm. on. An introvert is someone who gets their energy from being alone. An extrovert is someone who gets their energy from spending time with people, right? But you can also find an extrovert with not as great social skills, right? So it's about get, becoming comfortable with being around crowds, right? So let's go back because I don't want to miss my spot. But yes, say yes to all invitations. Give yourself a reason to go out and put yourself in these uncomfortable situations so that you can overcome them and then they will become more comfortable to you. I can tell you, I used to definitely be an introvert. Um, I can think all the way back to grade school, middle school, high school, I did not fit in anyone's clique. I was not into sports, I wasn't super smart, I was overweight, so I was alone a lot. And even um, as a child, my brother and I are 11 years apart. So as soon as he turned 18, he was out the house. So it was like I was an only child. So I've gotten very comfortable with being by myself. I wouldn't necessarily say that I get energy from that, um, but I'm okay with being by myself. I'm not one of those people who have to be around a whole bunch of people to enjoy myself. I'm ha I can be happy with just me right? Almost to a fault, almost to a fault. But when you become an entrepreneur, 
where your income is based on relationships, you better put some time and energy into flipping that around. Don't think you're going to get to director and you don't like being around people. You don't like starting conversations. You have got to put yourself in these uncomfortable situations so that you can turn your weakness into your strength. I remember one of the things um, that my husband, when we were dating, one of the things that he said that he loved about me was that he could take me to like a family event around his family or whatever, and he didn't feel like he had to stay with me 24 seven. I'm gonna go around, I'm gonna meet people, and uh, by the end of the event, everybody's gonna know me. And they're gonna remember me. But I had to make a conscious effort to become that person. I was not that person growing up. And when once I got into the business, I wasn't gonna let not liking to be around crowds stop me from making my money stop me from securing this legacy, stop me from hitting my next promotion. What? No, I'm going to force myself to get out there and learn social skills. How do you learn to be social? Go be social. And not give excuses, right? Number six, get over the fear of sounding dumb. Get over the fear of sounding dumb. Because of the lack of internal reflection on your thoughts before speaking them, many extroverts just have a lack of fear of how they sound before speaking. Whereas introverts usually will feel like they have to make sure that what they say is worthy of saying before saying it. Nope. To stop being an introvert, you're going to have to get over the fear of sounding dumb as it's the only way to develop your social skills and get over that fear of interaction. Everyone sounds dumb at some point, some people more than others, but no social person has ever lived a life without any social snafus. Instead, they laugh them off and learn the lesson so they can communicate better next time. Anybody have a fear of sounding dumb? So that's why you don't speak? Or you don't ask that question because you think it's a stupid question? If you have it, you gotta get over it. I want y'all to understand something. All of these things are things that you can control. These are all things that you can control. But if you don't work on these things, you're basically self-sabotaging your business. Beverly? Yes, ma'am. And you know, I'm thinking about just even coming in in this business. I was uh, timid, I was unsure, and I didn't wanna ask, I wouldn't ask questions when I first came in here. I wouldn't really speak up. I uh, even come in here because the confidence wasn't there. And in the past, I can remember just, like you said, not asking questions because it was, I don't want to be dumb. But, you know, I had to really lean into who I am and that um, it's only applied knowledge that's power. And every question that I don't ask, that's the stupid question because I didn't ask it. But every question that I ask helps me. It takes me closer to my goal. And I realized the more questions I ask and the more I understand, then I set myself up for success because then I'm going to avoid certain landmines. Because when I ask questions, people pour into me. They let me have their knowledge. And I'll give you an example. uh, During the pandemic, um, uh, Cheryl Pellegrino, she's the group, uh, she's the director of groups over in teletravel. Well, I met her over phone. And I said, listen, I don't know anything about travel like you do. I said, you got 30 plus years. I said, I'm just starting out. I said, may I ask you to pour into me? 
And she's like, oh, Beverly, nobody ever asked me that. I can pick up that phone right now and she'll pick up that phone or within the next, before the day ends, she's going to call me back. And I have developed that relationship where I've never met her, but I have that relationship with her. I can't wait to meet her one day because I showed up and all I wanted to do was to grow. And she said, I'm going to help you grow. Get away from myself. It, it makes me a better person. It helps me be a stronger person. So that's what I want to share. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks for sharing that. I want y'all to write this down. Competence breeds confidence. Competence breeds confidence. A lot of time, if you really, really, really get down to the nitty gritty, it's because you're not sure of yourself, which is why you're avoiding these interactions. Right. You don't want to pique someone's interest because you don't know what to say. Well, that's why we came up with some scripts to help you. Right. You, you, you haven't marketed your IntelliTravel business as you should because you, you're not comfortable with booking travel. Well, guess what? That's an easy fix. That's why we have the IntelliTravel Online Academy. Complete it. Pass the final exam. And if it's been a while since you've done anything with it, do it again. It's reading the advisor training manual. So you're competent in how to run your IntelliTravel business. It's being on the weekly webinars, hearing from the different suppliers. It's getting on the, what is it, Tuesday or Wednesday night groups training. It's getting on the travel agent Q&A. It's participating in, in reading the posts that are in the IntelliTravel Departure Lounge group. It's getting on the IMV. It's getting on basic training. It's like all the tools and resources for you to become competent in both of your businesses are there, but if you don't participate in them, how are you gonna get confident? And speaking, it's going to your weekly meetings because there's training there. You're learning how to speak in front of the room, right? Because you hit bronze, gold. They want you to come to the front of the room and introduce yourself. It starts there. But if you're not even showing up to your weekly meeting to make it to the front of the room to introduce yourself, how are you going to become confident? You have to keep practicing the thing that's hindering you so that you become really good at it. Number seven, interject in conversations. Interject in conversations. Again, this has more to do with social skills than being an introvert or extrovert, whichever is why it's really important to know that you can still be an introvert while getting better at all of these things. But introverts often spend so much time thinking about what to add to the conversation that by the time they come up with it or really formulated what they're going to say, the conversation has moved on. It's not enough to just go to these events or hang out with people and think you are growing. You really need to make a concerted effort to interject in conversations and be a part of it instead of sitting on the outskirts of it listening. Speak your opinion, share a funny antidote, and if someone tries to cut you off, keep going instead of just shutting up and letting them, which often we introverts are prone to do. Ooh, that was that's a whole word right there. Interject in conversations. Everybody has an opinion. Share yours. I love, love, love hearing from people who have a different opinion other than mine. I do. And I think that's and that I think that has always been in me because I remember going to, in college, one of my favorite courses was uh, writing persuasive discourses. 
right? And I had to persuade someone who had an opposite opinion to see things from my point of view. I used to love that. I love hearing from people who think differently than me because that is how I grow. That is how I grow. If we all thought had the same opinion, life would be boring. You have an opinion and it's worthy to be heard. Everyone should hear your opinion. You don't have to agree with everybody. Share your opinion. And no one should be nervous about sharing your own personal opinion because it's yours, right? I would expect Shamika to be nervous if she had to share my opinion, <laughs> right? That would be awkward to talk about, no. But if she shared her own opinion about a particular topic, she should be very confident in sharing that. Simple, easy. All right, so I'm going to go back over. I'm just going to read the titles of the top seven. Number one, practice starting up conversations with people familiar and random. Number two, force yourself to go to events with larger groups of people and find your zen there. Number three, instead of spending time alone, call a friend. Number four, think your thoughts out loud. Number five, say yes to all invitations. Number six, get over the fear of sounding dumb. And number seven, interject in conversations. So I want to hear some takeaways from today's topic. Yes, Miss Lorna, how are you? Listen, I am fine. I can't believe it. A psychological profile told you that. I can't hear you. Put the microphone closer to your mouth because we can't hear you. No, can't hear you at all now. Better? Okay, better. Okay, so a psychological profile told me that I'm an introvert. So I took that on all these years, but I'm not an introvert. Oh my God. Listen, in school, in high school, I was the head girl. I was the one going on de the debate teams. I am not shy if I have to take photographs. I do have a phobia to go live on Facebook though. So these are the little things that enforce it for me that I'm really an, an introvert. But with all this list, this is the opposite of me. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Even one of my BP said, no, you're not an introvert. And I tried to argue my way out of it, I guess. But you know how sometimes when I get on the calls um, in the meetings, I'm not shy to ask my questions. And some of these directors put you on the spot and I'm never shy to ask my questions. So I'm not See? Wow. And that's that's crazy that a psychologist put that label on you. We got to be real careful. Thanks for sharing that, Lorna. And, and I'm so glad that you've come to the understanding that you are not an introvert. It is very dangerous to allow other people's opinion of you become your reality. That is a dangerous place to be. Be very careful of that. Uh, number four was think your thoughts out loud. Think your thoughts out loud. So that's another reason why, Lorna, I shared the definition. Because some people get introvert and shy, they like it's one and the same, and it, and, it, and it's not. Again, it's just that you need to work on your social skills. That's all it is. You just got to work on your social skills. Uh, Sharice? I wanted to say um, my takeaway is about um, your, your comment that you left with us. Competent builds confidence. Um, it's not that a lot of people fall into this introvert or extrovert category. It's their confident, uh, it's their competent. Mm -hmm. And I, I always say the more you know, you will have confidence in speaking on it. And 
um, like if the director is giving you a try, that's because you should know you've been listening to the information long enough and now it's time to apply it and practice it. Yeah. And when you practice it within your team, you're able to start speaking out loud outside of that comfort zone that you've been in. So this was very helpful um, to know that overall, we just need to have the competence of this business, knowing the inside and out of it. And, and Tanisha Burks, one thing that I would tell you on Saturday, and thank you so much for um, doing that closing for me. You, you brought something up um, that I was not able to answer. And that made me go ahead and reach out to Plan Ad Marketing to just confirm and uh, just put those pieces together. The more you know the better you are in three ways, the better you are in speaking up for your team. Because if you do not have that, you want the money, but you also have to bring your, your, your knowledge up to par. And when you partner up with the right people that's giving you knowledge, such as a platform as this, you're able to utilize it in other areas. So make sure that you all are grasping what is being given here because this is very powerful that can just really take you on to that next level. Thank you. Thank you, Sharice, for sharing that. Shamika? Um, I just would like to say I am a true extrovert <laughs> by heart from everything you said. The only thing that I I'm really working on now is saying yes to all invitations. So that's why you saw me <laughs> at that wedding expo and everything. So I, I'm definitely a true extrovert at heart. And I had to get there because I was the one that, you know, if I had to speak in front of people, remember something, I would just get up there and just totally freeze and just not do nothing, not say nothing. I wouldn't start conversations. And I had to work on that. And I say this business has helped me do that. And also me taking my college class, I had an oral communications class, so I had to speak in front of people. And that actually helped me out tremendously as well, too. So awesome. Awesome. Another thing that you can do um, to kind of break the ice to, you know, kind of put yourself out there is say something funny. Make people laugh. People won't remember what you say, but they will remember how you made them feel. And if you can make someone laugh or, you know, crack a joke or something, it really takes the edge off of everything. So something funny that I do often, and if anybody has ever been in an elevator with me, and there's been a lot of people on there, one of the things I, I always, not always, but a lot of the time. So like, for example, when you go to convention, and you're trying to get up to your room, right? You're waiting for the elevator. The elevators are jam packed, right? So a lot of times it's very awkward standing in an elevator. You're, you're, everybody's up in your, like you have no personal space in an elevator, right? Everybody's elbow to elbow, right? I usually will crack a joke and I'll say, I just want to thank everybody for taking a shower this morning. I really, really appreciate it. Everybody falls out laughing when I say that. Everybody cracks up. Right. But again, I do that on purpose, not just for them, but for me, because I'm feeling very awkward and having that many people in my personal space. And so I got to lighten the lighten the mood. And so just by saying something like that, it just makes everybody laugh. It, you know, it brings everybody's wall down They're You know, if they're having a bad day. Guess what? I just made them laugh. I just made them smile. They're going to remember. They're going to remember. Anybody else want to share their takeaway? Well, I have a takeaway. Yeah. It's Michelle. Hey, Michelle. Um, my takeaway is that I will no longer be calling myself an introvert. Um, I always do that. And that's because I have like a hard time starting conversations and I have a hard time speaking in front of people. But I did take public speaking when I was in college and I ended up getting an A in the classroom. Everybody thought I was great. And I was like, well, I'm glad you guys do because <laughs> I was just like so nervous every time, but I did find that it was easier. Every time I had to do it, the easier it got. So I'm definitely taking that away. And um, the competence builds confidence. I'm definitely taking that away. I'm taking them all away, but those are just two of the ones that I just wanted to mention that really stood out because you have to be confident in what you're doing. 
And so this right here is a confidence booster. So thank you so much for sharing this information. You're welcome. You're welcome. I got something really quick, just yeah. really quick. Um, I'm not necessarily a, a, um, an introvert, but sometimes being in business, like for you, I really appreciate you because you always welcome input. But there's other platforms where if you ask a question, if you say something, you're often shut down or made to feel a certain kind of way. And so I'm more vocal here in certain spaces, but not everywhere because, like I said, certain places that you you are shut down or, you know, it's not a good thing. So it's like I have to really get past that on those other platforms because I don't mind speaking to you or to people on here, but other other places, girl, it could be something else. So I have to make sure that I even start speaking in other with around other people as well. Yes, yes. I used to have that same issue, uh, divorce, where I it would be around certain people. And if I went to share my opinion or something, I would be shut down. So then that caused me to draw back and just was like, you know what, I'm not going to say anything. But you get tired at some point, you get tired of being someone's for lack of a better word, their punching bag right? They, they could just let loose on you and, and talk you down. You get at a certain point, you're going to get tired of that. And I had to learn to be confident in who I was and what I said and realize that I was worthy enough to be heard. What made that person more, um, you know, more worthy to be heard than me? They put their pants on one leg at a time like me. They bleed red blood just like I... What makes you better than me? That what you have to say is more important than what I have to say. I had to turn that around for myself. And I was, and, and then I got, I started getting angry about it. Cause then I was like, who the hell do these people think they are? Like, you ain't nobody. I, I know who my father is. Hello. Right. right. I was created Please. in his image. You are no better than me. Mm -hmm. So I had to gas myself up. And, and really started speaking life into myself. That's why I said there's power in the tongue and stop calling yourself an introvert. Right. And instead say, you got to work on your social skills. Mm -hmm. We all have something we have to work on. But if we keep saying negative things about ourselves, guess what? You're putting that out into the atmosphere and now it becomes true. And not only are you seeing yourself that way, but guess what? Everybody else is now starting to see you that way too. So what type of people do you think you're going to attract to your business? We can't, we don't need shy people in this business. We need people who are not afraid to talk to people. So if you putting off that energy that you don't like people, you don't like talking to people, you don't like starting a conversation, you're going to attract the same type of people. And so now both of y'all ain't going to be doing nothing in your business. Are y'all going to let that block you from securing this legacy for your family? Are you going to let this opportunity stop you? You know, let, let those fears stop you from being able to have this opportunity replace your corporate salary and walk away from your job? No, absolutely not. So how can you fight that? positive affirmations write down five positive affirmations about yourself and say them every single morning so that you can reprogram your brain to be confident in who you are and realize that everything you have to say is valuable you deserve to say it and, and we should all be able to hear it because your opinion does matter you have to command respect people aren't just going to give it to you so you have to have confidence in yourself and be able to um, have that confident energy, right? If you think about some of the people that you admire or look up to, right? I love Mrs. Bradley. Everything about Mrs. Bradley, I love. Ditto, I do too. Right? So I often will glean from how she carries herself, how she speaks, how she dresses, everything. It's her whole essence. See, she is a strong, powerful, independent woman. Yeah, she's married to Mr. Bradley, but she's independent, 
right? She's creating her own lane. She's not in the shadow of Planet Marketing. And she's confident in what she's doing. And so what? People are inviting her to speak on different platforms and stuff like that. So she's modeling what it looks like. So find someone that you admire that is strong and confident and emulate them, glean from them, but become your own version. Don't try to be them. That's not what I'm saying. Don't try to be them, right? But you become your own version. 10X yourself on everything, your confidence, your posture, your conversation, just everything. Any closing comments? We're five minutes over. Closing comments from anyone? All right. So again, this is streaming live in our Team Lux Platinum group. I'm going to also upload it to my YouTube channel, and I will put in the comments on both um, these seven things and, and notes from it. All right. So as always, have an amazing day and love y'all. Bye. Peace.